as you can see that the ship is actually on blocks uh, it's dry docked first time I see a dry dock actually see people working on it right there little man lift I wanted to share a really short story with you of what it was like in my experience as an entry-level engineer. And I think this is going to help out a lot of people that are coming behind, a lot of engineering students who a lot of times you don't know what to expect. You know, you have this imposter syndrome going on. And so I'm going to share this lesson or, well, this story with you of my experience as an entry-level engineer. Now, keep in mind that this was approximately nine years ago, almost a decade since I left, since I left school and enjoyed the engineering industry. And it's been a great ride so far. So I'm going to start with my first job. And obviously I'm going to be going over the details of what it was like to work for the first organization that I worked for, what industry it is that I got into. Uh, if there was any dress code, what the salary was like, uh, we'll also be going over the schedule that I worked and obviously, obviously the work itself. But before we get there, the first thing I want to mention here is that if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Alex Isidro and here we talk about engineering career and life analysis. And if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss any future videos just like this one. So. Let's start with what is entry level. We got to start with the baseline, right? Like make sure we all on the same page. Entry level is basically the lowest position that you can find in a company. Now, when it comes to us engineers, when we join the engineering field, you're going to be entering as a rookie, right? You enter, you're at the bottom of the hierarchy, you're at the bottom of the ladder. And then over time, as you gain more experience, you gain, uh, other skills per se or you improve your skills then you will slowly start going up the corporate ladder so now that we have an understanding and an idea of what entry level means when i entered the engineering industry uh, for my entry level position uh, it was into the naval industry specifically defense and i've been on the defense industry for the last nine years and i've learned a great deal or, or on the ins and outs of the naval industry of course with respect anything that is relevant to exactly what i do uh, when i first joined industry back in 2012 i joined a I joined the government. I worked for the government for approximately three years in this entry level position, and then I left the government. And so the really cool thing about entering this government program as an entry level engineer was the fact that I actually entered a rotational program. And it was actually also uh, a ladder per se, because number one, it was a rotational program in such a way that I was once I started working, I was ex I was going to be exposed throughout three year period. I was going to be exposed to different fields and different parts of the organization. I was going to go from logistics to technical to industrial sites. And then eventually I ended up leaving before I finished my rotational program. But that was the original goal. Now, when I say ladder, it means that as long as I did my job and as long as I actually did what I was supposed to do and perform and deliver results, I was going to get promoted to a higher, a higher rank and also a higher level of salary with that. And so with respect to the salary, the salary itself for the Washington DC area back then, I was earning $54,000 a year. Now, if you really think about it after taxes, it was really not that much, but luckily I was living with my parents for the first couple of years. And so I was able to not really save up that, that much money because uh, <laughs> I had a lot of loans to pay off, but it was enough for me to make a living and actually establish myself in the Washington DC area after college. Now, when I mentioned the latter, uh, journey within this organization for my entry level position, I was going to go from $54,000 all the way to 90,000. That was the goal in three and a half years. And that's actually one of the enticing parts about this program, because uh, I've, I don't know how it is for other engineers out there in industry. Like, I mean, I have an idea now, but back then I didn't really know how much engineers were expected to get after a couple of years of experience on the field. And so having this idea or this goal of 92,000 or nine, approximately 90,000 after three and a half years for me, it was a huge accomplishment. And I was actually very, very uh, much looking forward to all the promotions that I was going to get, of course. Now, when it comes to the dress code, the dress code, it was simply just like your regular tie and your regular slacks. 
uh, depending on what you had going on uh, a lot of people would just wear suits or some people would just wear like the regular like a typical engineering attire which is like you polish your khakis so it really depends on who you wear uh, what you had going on if you had to meet with clients or if you had to meet if you had important meetings obviously you'll wear suits but generally speaking personally uh, most of the time I used to just wear a shirt a tie and slacks uh, a lot of people complain about that. I really didn't mind it. I don't really don't mind. I actually do like dressing up. Oh, by the way, also with respect to the dress code, if you were scheduled to go on site, because obviously we were working in an office, but if you were scheduled to go on site and go to the ships, the surface ships, which is which are the things that we uh, worked on and we helped out with as engineers, uh, then obviously you have to wear your steel toe boots. Uh, and then the regular attire for someone that's going out there to the boats is uh, steel toe boots, uh, khakis, and a polo shirt, or obviously like any type of coats or anything that you may need, depending on how cold it is, and also like where you are. Sometimes you go down south in the United States and it gets really hot, and good luck with that. Now, when it comes to the schedule itself, uh, a, a lot of people, it, it really depends on what you wanted. Back then, the company, or not, not company, the organization, the government organization that I worked for, allowed us to work uh, on a flex schedule. That's, the, what's, that's what they call it. And what that means is basically having a three-day weekend every other week. And you achieve this by working nine hours for not for nine for eight days and then working an eight hour shift and that way you work 80 hours in two weeks and you average 40 hours a week so that was a nice perk per se definitely because then you would get a three-day weekend every other week and that was awesome i went from fridays and then eventually ended up switching to taking mondays off and uh having a three-day weekend every other week was a really really sweet perk so when it comes to the stress level of the the job itself it really wasn't that stressful most of the time uh, however i do want to say that there were times when you had a lot of deadlines when it comes to writing reports or maybe you had to do because i was dealing with contracts in my first rotation uh which i'll go over in a second uh, there were some reviews that I had to finish very, very quickly and I had to work with other engineers. And so that review process, which was very short timeline. And so that spiked up the stress levels for quite a bit, but most of the time the work actually came in waves. Like there were times when you were slammed and then it would have slowed down for a bit and then you will get slammed again. So uh, personally, I'd rather have that than being stressed out all the time or being slow all the time, you know? So that was a nice balance. And so that that was that part of the experience when it comes to the stress level now when it comes to the work itself i was basically helping out with two programs uh, my, as my entry level position the first one that i was helping out with was logistics which entailed a lot of contract management a lot of uh making sure the people that we were supporting all the boats that we were supporting uh, making sure we made all the logistical arrangements to, to so that they could have supply of lube oil or lubricants in general and then the second part and then the second part of that first position was actually working with diesel engines and lube oil analysis lubricant analysis it was actually the first time i understood how important lubricants are for mechanical systems like a lot of times we really don't think about those things we think about the electrical systems and mechanical systems all the moving parts but we don't understand that those moving parts are moving obviously because because they have oil and the oil needs to be changed on time the oil needs to be changed based on how well it's performing if the oil is dirty it can damage the equipment it can damage the machinery that especially if it's rotating if it's moving if there's a lot of moving parts obviously the oil has to be very very clean it has to be purified it has to be filtered and also it has to perform at its best all the time so my team and i we were actually in charge of analyzing the lubricants that the ship would send to a lab and the lab would obviously analyze and will give us the chemical composition they will give us the the physical properties of the viscosity of the lubricant and they will give us a report with all those parameters and then we will based on those parameters we would make recommendations to the ship so that they in turn 
could provide the proper maintenance for all the equipment they had on board. So in short, I really liked the position that I had there working with lubricants and analyzing lubricants. And I also got to work with oil companies uh, doing lubricant analysis with contractors. With Also, I was working with a professor who was very, very patient. He actually gave me a lot of insight and he kind of mentored me into the position. I was working with chemists. I was working with experts on lubricants uh, and I definitely, definitely learned a lot from them. The other thing that I did as a mechanical engineer when at my entry level position here in the logistics and contract management and lubricant oil analysis department. Uh, I also led a study on diesel engines and actually ended up writing a technical report that unfortunately no longer have, but and not, to, not that I can show it to you anyways, but it just goes to show how much your technical writing skills matter when you join industry, not only for this report, but also uh, because of my program, I was required to submit a technical report on everything that I had done, all my accomplishments, all my plans. And so all the technical writing skills that I actually learned in school came in very, very, very handy to the point that I actually even got complimented for the reports that I was submitting. So <clears throat> it was actually, uh, I mean, back then, obviously I was a young engineer, so it felt very, very good to get that compliment and say, you know what, like that was a really good report. So they definitely, definitely meant a lot and definitely boosted my confidence. There wasn't really uh, that much travel with this position. Uh, if you are interested in knowing how much travel you will be doing for your specific job, that's really going to depend on your position, like what you have going on, your client, your company. So for me, it was probably about like five to 10% travel. It really wasn't that much, but I have been in other positions where there was a lot of travel required. After that, I also ended up working on uh, more technical stuff. Eventually, as I mentioned earlier, there was a rotational program. So that was the first part. And the second part was more technical. It was more drawings related. I, end, I did end up using AutoCAD mechanical for quite a few months. And, and it was more related to mechanical devices, like how to draw, like making some reparations and making some installations of equipment. And so I was in charge of outlining and demonstrating all the different parts, everything that needed to be done, any welding dimensions that needed to be pointed out on a, on a drawing. So I developed all of that. And then after that, the most, the most, the most, this is, this was the technical branch. And the most exciting part about that technical branch was that I actually got to go on site. I went to South Carolina for a couple of months and I actually ended up working on a ship. And that was very, very insightful. And this actually, this is gonna be a video that I'm gonna make on its own because this, is, this was a whole new experience. And I was actually helping out as an assistant port engineer. And if you never heard of a port engineer, they're basically engineers that are in charge of the work that takes place uh, in ports. Like they deal mainly with the naval industry. So I was there for a couple of months where I was racking up overtime. I was working long hours, at least 10, 12 hours every day. Um, and it was very, very hands-on, a lot of a lot of like stains on your clothes and it was like you get dirty like once you go actually on site i mean construction people know exactly what i'm talking about or if you ever been on site like once you once engineers go on site like you don't go there to hang out and like you don't stay clean because for my job specifically uh for that specific position i had to go into like little like manholes and uh, we had to inspect inspect tanks fuel tanks uh, we had to inspect diesel engines, boilers, compressors, like separators. So all these mechanical devices are obviously there's a lot of oil involved and like you get dirty. And so it was just normal. Like, I mean, it really wasn't not that I not that I don't want to get dirty. Let me just make that clear. But that's just some insight that I wanted to share with you for the purposes of this video. I'm going to the side. Going to the side of the ship now. As you can see, that the ship is actually on blocks. Uh, it's dry docked. First time I see a dry dock, actually. See people working on it. Right there. Little man lift. It's fucking ship is huge apparently it's bigger than the titanic uh only a few feet bigger than the titanic length and beam beam which is the height of the ship so cool facts so that was 
probably the best part of my experience as an entry level engineer actually going on site and applying or seeing how all the applications of engineering take place take place how they perform uh it was a really really great experience to interact with experts with electricians with machinists with welders and actually calling out engineers on a lot of the drawings that we provide because i was basically the liaison or the connection between all the hands-on work that was taken up that was taking place in the shipyard and the engineering department that I was representing when I was there. So that was basically my experience on the job itself for my entry level position as a mechanical engineer. That approximately lasted about three years. And until after that time, I ended up leaving the government and ended up going somewhere else. Now let's talk about how did I adapt and what it was like, how rough it was going transitioning from college and all the work to going to work 40, 50 hours a week for my full-time job and actually getting paid to do engineering work, you know? So in the beginning, it was a little rough because I didn't really know what to expect. Although I did have a little bit of experience from my internships and from the previous year, I already knew some people from the organization. And so it really wasn't that terrible meeting the new people. But, and also uh, once I actually got to know uh, the job, I really wasn't trained or anything. The first couple of months were a little rough. Uh, I was kind of, um, I was kind of, uh, trained by the fire hose method, which basically entails you getting asked all these questions and then you're forced to figure out what to do and how to provide a solution. So it entailed going out to people and reaching out and introducing myself and saying, Hey, I'm so, and so like, I'm new here. I'm trying to figure things out. It's like, could you help me? Do you mind giving me some insights, some advice? And so luckily for me, there were a lot of engineers that were really, really, um, helpful and were able, and they made the time to, uh, give me insight. Uh, so I did have people that showed me the ropes and, uh, obviously they had a lot more years of experience than I did. And so it was really, really, it was really nice. So did I make any mistakes? Of course, I made a lot of mistakes when I made, uh, when I was making recommendations based on the analysis that I was doing. Uh, one time I got called out by a chief engineer 